Welcome to Search the Scriptures Daily, a radio ministry of the Berean Call, featuring Dave Hunt and T.A. McMahon. Now, this week's cover article. We continue our series of discussions based on Dave Hunt's book from Harvest House. With the 25th installment of In Defense of the Faith, here are Dave Hunt and T.A. McMahon. Thanks, Gary. You're listening to Search the Scriptures Daily, a program in which we encourage everyone who desires to know God's truth to look to God's Word for all that is essential for salvation and living one's life in a way that is pleasing to Him. Dave, as you know, we challenged our listeners to do some homework in reviewing the scenarios in the four Gospels which deal with the resurrection of Jesus. And the question we're going to start with, which I'll read in a moment, concerns itself with seeming contradictions. For example, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John seem to be presenting conflicting information about what took place when the women visited the tomb of Jesus on that Sunday morning after his death. If that's the case, then the Bible, which claims to be God's word, is certainly not that because God can neither make mistakes nor contradict himself, that is, and still be God. So if someone's thinking the Gospels have some problems, ultimately it's going to have an adverse effect on their view of the Bible. So Dave, here's the question taken from your book, In Defense of the Faith. The resurrection of Jesus is the very foundation of Christianity, yet those who wrote the Gospels seem to be in conflict even on this most important subject. Matthew says, an angel came down from heaven, rolled away the stone, and sat upon it. Mary Magdalene and the other Mary approached and were frightened. The angel told them not to be afraid and invited them into the tomb to see where Jesus had lain. And this is Matthew 28, verses 1 to 6. The question goes on. In contrast, Mark says that Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Salome did not see the angel until they entered the tomb. The angel then pointed to where Jesus had lain. And, of course, this is Mark 16, verses 1 to 6. In further contradiction, the questioner goes on, Luke says the women entered the tomb as they looked for the body of Jesus. Suddenly, two angels appeared to them, addressed the women, whereas Luke states that his two angels were standing. And that's Mark 16.5 and Luke 24.4. One account says the women saw Jesus and then went to tell his disciples. That's Matthew 28.9. And yet a third version says they fled from the sepulcher and didn't tell anyone or see Jesus. That's Mark 16.8. The disciples were told that Jesus would meet them in Galilee Matthew 28, 7, Mark 16, 7. Yet Luke and John say he came to them in Jerusalem. What can you make of this hopeless tangle of contradictions? Now, Dave, before we jump into this. That's uh, pretty complicated stuff. So. Well, on the one hand, it is. On the other hand, as we know, and we'll get into the details, this questioner is trying to force some things that the text actually it doesn't say. Mm-hmm. But... Let's let's go for. Uh, let, let me just say this, Tom. Okay. Angels do different things. They don't just do one thing. And if you're getting it from a different perspective, uh, one account could tell you something an angel did. The other one could tell you something else the angel did. Something the women did. There could be more than one angel, and so forth. Mm-hmm. Obviously. But so. but from one perspective, the writer is only addressing what one angel That's did, right. not what two. Exactly. Well, Dave. Let's start with the first part of this. An angel came down from heaven, rolled away the stone, and sat upon it. Now, we have one particular angel, but then we have two inside. Is that a, is that a problem? No problem. That's what the Bible says. An angel came, rolled away the stone, and sat on it. Mm-hmm. There weren't any women around. We don't know that any women saw that. In fact, the stone had already been rolled away when the women came. Mm-hmm. The, that particular angel frightened the soldiers, and they ran off. They fled. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now, you know what I'd like to do, Dave, is I have, uh, and this sort of makes it easy, I have all four scenarios, mm-hmm. one from Matthew, one from Mark, mm-hmm. one from Luke, one from John, mm-hmm. right in front of me. And I just want to point out, looking at them all at one time, some things that seem very different. For example, Matthew 
says that it was Mary Magdalene and the other Mary. Mark says Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James, and Salome. Luke just refers to, to them in general, and it says certain, uh, there were certain others with them. And then, of course, John says Mary Magdalene just addresses Mary Magdalene by herself. Now, so we have, if we're just reading John, it looks like there's just one Mary mm-hmm. Magdalene, mm-hmm. but when we look at the others, there's a, a group of them. Well, John is telling us about Mary Magdalene. Mm-hmm. He's not telling us about everybody else. And uh, when you read the account, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary. Well, who's the other Mary? That's Matthew. Mark says Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Salome. Why can't she be the other Mary? I don't know, Tom. You're catching me here, and I didn't do my homework because I told them all to do. (laughs) But uh, I don't see any problem with that. Mm-hmm. I've been traveling, folks. Uh, give me a, a break here, okay? I just got back last late last night. But I don't see the problem. It talks about a group of women. Some accounts name them in detail, some in lesser detail. John only focuses on Mary. I don't see what the problem mm-hmm. is. Well, what about the... Uh, let's go down to the next, next right. issue. Mm-hmm. In Matthew, we have one angel... In Mark, we have one angel, but then in Luke, it says two men stood by them in in shining garments. And then in John, it says, this is John chapter 20, verse 12, and seeth two angels in white sitting, one at the head and the other at the feet. So obviously, Dave, somebody concerned about this, just saying, hey, wait a minute. Right. Either this is wrong, or they're not where they're supposed to be, they're not doing mm. the things they're supposed to be. Sure. That well, confuses people. Well, obviously, God has a lot of angels. <laughs> he has more than one angel. Mm-hmm. And I see no reason why one particular angel can't come, roll the stone away, sit on it, and be outside the tomb and terrify the women, and why he can't say things to the women when they arrive. After the soldiers have fled now. It would be ridiculous to think that Wow, these are very brave women. The soldiers are all stricken. <laughs> they're they're knocked down like they're dead men because his face is like lightning and so forth. And these women just walk right through all these soldiers and walk up to the angel. That doesn't make too much sense. I think the soldiers have fled. So there's an angel outside the tomb, the one who rolled the stone away. He talks to the women. However, when the women go in, there's an angel sitting at the head and one at the feet if you want to go into detail about it, or you could just talk about one angel inside the tomb saying something. This is why we have four accounts, Mm -hmm. and we've talked about that before, that if each one of the writers of the Gospels just said word for word what the other says, what's the point? We might as well have one Gospel. Now we have four accounts, and they seem to contradict one another in certain places because they're telling what happened from different perspectives. Mm -hmm. That gives the critics uh, a chance to laugh and chortle and and feel triumphant and that they have shown that there are mistakes in the Bible or contradictions. On the other hand, when you examine it carefully, there there aren't Mm -hmm. contradictions. Dave, there's another aspect to this, and that is a timeline. Sometimes we impose a strict timeline on this. Reading one of the Gospels, we think from one verse to the next, it has to happen instantly, whereas that's not necessarily true. The writers are saying, look, this took place, and then this took place, but they don't tell us specifically how much time between one event and the other. So other things could happen. Other things could enter in that maybe John picks up on, but Mark doesn't. Uh, But again, we're getting this, as you said, we're getting information that's true. Dave, uh, when I mentioned about a timeline, for example, when the women leave the tomb, Mm -hmm. in some cases, it looks like Mary sees Jesus right away. In some cases, she runs to Peter. Peter comes and so on. How do we reconcile those things? Well, I've always understood that Mary comes back to the tomb 
she hasn't seen Jesus yet when she runs and tells Peter, mm-hmm. or the, she tells the disciples, and Peter and John come racing to the tomb. Obviously, Mary is going to come back. She doesn't run as fast as they do. And when they leave, it's pretty clear in John, when they leave, Mary is still there mm-hmm. pondering this. That's when she sees Jesus. Now, what the other women have done, that is told by other accounts here. In the detail. Some flee to their home. Mm-hmm. Some on the way, women on the way into town, Jesus meets them. So Jesus can appear to different people at different times. Okay. Now, uh, just help me with this one other aspect. In Matthew, it says that And as they went to tell his disciples, referring to the women, Mm -hmm. and Matthew mentions Mary Magdalene and the other Mary, Mm -hmm. and it says in verse 9, this is Matthew 28, verse Mm 9, and as they went to tell his disciples, behold, Jesus met them, saying, All hail, and they came and held him by the feet and worshipped him. Now, when we compare that with John, John gives a specific Scenario with regard to Mary and Jesus. It seems to be Mary Magdalene alone with Jesus. But does that necessarily have to be the case? Can the other Mary be with her? Well, let's read from John. Mm -hmm. It says, we have a sequence of events here. It says that she runneth and cometh to Simon Peter and to the other disciple. Now, It seems to me that Mary, they don't necessarily know where these disciples are. Uh, They're hiding out. I mean, where are they? I don't know. And all of the women are running to, let's say, there are half a dozen women. I don't know. Mm -hmm. It could have been. And, And they're going in different directions, perhaps. Mary thinks they're over here. These people are going in that direction. Jesus greets, they see him. But Mary has not seen him yet. She finds the disciples. She finds, in fact, she finds two of the disciples. Two of the disciples apparently are not with the other disciples. Mm-hmm. The other women, John and Peter. That's right. The other women may have run off to find the rest of them. Mm-hmm. And Mary, specifically, we are told in John, finds Peter and John. And she says, they've taken away the Lord. I don't know where they've laid him. She doesn't know he's risen. Obviously, he has not appeared to her yet on her way to find the disciples. And she has now found Peter and John. She thinks somebody stole the body. She still thinks that when Jesus comes to her. So Peter and John run back to the sepulcher. And Mary makes her way, I'm sure, just as fast as she can to follow them because they're going to solve this problem for her. They're going to find out what happened. And she comes along, and and we have the account of of Peter and and John. Well, first of all, Peter, he's a little bit hesitant about this. The first disciple outruns Peter. Okay, he comes first to the tomb. He looks in and sees the linen clothes and so forth. Now Now we're inside the tomb, and Simon Peter comes, and he sees it and so forth. And then they go away. Verse 10, Then the disciples went away again unto their own home. They're pondering this. They don't understand. So Mary is still standing outside the sepulcher. She's weeping. Mm -hmm. They haven't solved the problem. She's told them they've taken the Lord away. They haven't solved the problem for her. And she looks into the sepulcher. And now she sees two angels. This is a different... (laughs) occasion than when Peter and John were in there. This is a different occasion when other women have looked in there. She sees two angels, and they uh, say something to her. And then she says, she's looking in. She's still on the outside, and they say, why, why are you weeping? And she says, because they've taken away the Lord. I don't know where they laid him. And she then now she turns around, and she sees Jesus. This is still John's Gospel. She doesn't expect him to be alive. She thinks he's the gardener. Mm -hmm. And um, he asks her why she's weeping and so forth. 
And I don't see any any problem here. There are a number of women. Some of them have gone in one direction to find the disciples. Mary went in another direction. She didn't find all the disciples. She found Peter and John. And so we have John, of course, is writing the Gospel of John. Mm -hmm. And he's telling us from his perspective what happened. I, I don't see any contradiction whatsoever. Now, Dave, somebody would say, well, that's just the way you see it. That's not what the texts say. On the other hand... It is what the text says. <laughs> well, no, wh what you're saying is Mary did this and then she did this. Dave, what you're saying is consistent with what the text says. Right. And you're looking at this as a, as a scenario. These are possibilities, although we're not given maybe some specifics, but it's reasonable, it's rational, it eliminates contradictions. But those who have pr a problem with it, I think, are trying to impose a certain time constraint, a certain idea on this, and that's why they're having problems with it. Exactly, Tom. In order to make a contradiction, you have to see a contradiction, and then you have to support a contradiction. And then you have to try to say, well, but Mary must have been with the other women. So Jesus must have met her, but yet John says she hasn't seen Jesus yet. Let's take what the narrative says. Mm -hmm. Let's take what each one is telling us. And when we read it from their perspective, what they have been saying, there are no contradictions. You have to make the text mean what you want it to mean in order for there to be a contradiction. Right, right. simple example would be, well... Some of the writers say there was one angel, and others say that there were two. Well, if I'm caught up with that, I'm not allowing for the possibility that there was one, and then on another slightly different time uh, of this event, there were two. Angels are on different missions from God, yeah. and doing different things, and so forth. Well, I, th think that, Dave, I think that's perfectly reasonable. Dave, let's finish this off with the last question that this individual poses, and that is, uh, I'll quote from Matthew 28, verse 10. Then said Jesus unto them, that is, these women who were there, be not afraid, go tell my brethren that they go into Galilee, and there they shall see me. Now, the problem the person has is that the women see Jesus before they go into Galilee. Jesus appears later among his uh, disciples. Not in Galilee, but right there. Well, Tom, he is talking about a particular appearance he is going to make. And at that time, all the disciples, 500 of them, is what Paul tells us. He appeared to over 500 at one time. So Jesus is talking about a general gathering of the disciples. Tell the disciples, not just the twelve, hey, get the word out to the whole gang out there. And if they will come to this mountain in Galilee, you know, I will meet them there. Mm -hmm. But in the meantime, he can certainly talk to individuals <laughs> and remind his disciples again, hey guys, let's get on to Galilee now. He does appear that evening. Well, he appears to two on the road to Emmaus. And when they come rushing back, then Jesus mm -hmm. comes and appears. Now, Jesus has the right to appear yeah, a number of times. He hasn't contradicted himself. No. He said, oops, I can't do this because I said I was going to do that. No, no, he, is, he's, he does meet them in Galilee. Mm -hmm. But um, he's, re he's reminding them of, of, of this a few times. Mm -hmm. And Dave, I'm sure there's some listeners out there. Well, these guys have made this more confusing than ever. What we're trying to do is that... To encourage people who get a little concerned when they read something that it doesn't match in their own mind, and again, I emphasize in their own mind, with uh, what they think it should say. But let's look to the text. Let's look to, the Lord is laying this out for us. He's giving us four different perspectives. He's giving us different kinds of information, all which is valuable. And we want people to not be put off by seeming contradictions or seeming information that uh, somebody e either told them or they've come upon it themselves that it just doesn't look like it meshes. If you're a Christian, you believe the Bible is God's word, 
And don't just jump to a conclusion, oh, there must be a contradiction because somebody says there's one. Check it out. And it's simple logic that different writers can write from different perspectives. It's simple logic that there could be more than one angel doing more than one thing. It's simple logic that there's more women than even it says. It says and certain others with them. It's simple logic that they don't all go, look, we're going to find the disciples. Well, some of them think the disciples are here, some think they're there. Mary finds Peter and John. Okay, so there's no contradiction. But if that causes you to study the Word of God more carefully, then praise God. Please visit our website thebereancall.org to access our radio archives going back to 1999 and our newsletter going back to 1986. We offer daily updates by email or visit us on Facebook or Twitter. Are you looking for information about a specific topic? Go to thebereancall.org and click on Topics at the top of the page. Our online store is thebereancall.com. We offer a wide variety of books, tracks, CDs, and DVDs. Note that most of our ebooks are free. I'm Gary Carmichael. Thanks for tuning in, and we hope you can join us again next week. Until then, we encourage you to search the scriptures 24 7. Don't none go with me. I still will follow, no turning back, no turning back.